Hadley and I met in London back in 2002, 20 years ago now. We were in Les Miserables together. It was both our West End debut. In fact, I was Hadley's understudy as Marius. And in between shows, we'd go in Soho Square and hang out. And that was the start of our friendship. So after you do We Got to Call Our Hollow. I'll keep going. You keep Both going. Both times. Yes. Yes, sir. It's easier. So, um, before we get to... This winter, we were meant to be performing in Japan together. But because of COVID and travel restrictions, we couldn't make that happen. So instead, we thought we'd come back to Soho, hang out, and play some music together like we used to. In this show, we want to celebrate a hundred years of incredible musicals, playing a song from each decade of the last century. Ten songs, ten decades. Well, I think it's fitting that we're doing from the rehearsal room in London because yeah. we were meant to be in Japan right now. Right now, yeah. Didn't happen again. Yeah. Because we enjoyed it doing the first time and we can't sit around twilling our thumbs. So we well, got... We and which, which we, we have, yeah. <laughs> but we can't do that always. <laughs> yeah. So we decided to do it again. And I had this idea, if we do one song per decade for the last 10 decades, which is? 100 years. 100 years. Yeah. It's a long time, Sam. Yeah. yeah. The last time we did From the Rehearsal Room, we covered an awful lot of material that you and I had sung on stage before, or at some point had encountered. And so actually in this one, it's been really nice to do stuff we haven't perhaps done as much. Well, there's um, a lot in this that I learned as well, which yeah, has 100%. been great. But it's also been really nice, hasn't it, to track through... I mean, it's very easy to say, yes, we're tracking through 100 years with one song from one decade and feel like you're getting a sort of flavour of that decade. But it is interesting to see that sort of progression um, through 100 years of musical theatre, you know, I suppose that's to a certain extent the time frame of its existence. Yeah. And did you find it like with some of the decades, oh, what are we going to choose? Because this is something 100%. we can do a hundred times. Yeah. The sadness yeah. can always be different. That's why I kind of like this decades idea and it's something I think we should try and do once a year. This yeah. could be our musical theatre pilgrimage. <laughs> but for some of the decades, like 1920s, so we're going to start then. But I only knew one show from the time. I'm starting with that. <laughs> Next time we do this, I might dive into the other ones. But showboat it Which was. Like. Every time. The other nice thing about it is really is that you come to a decade and you go, I don't really sing anything from that decade. I don't know anything from that mm -hmm. decade. Let's have a look what's there. Why don't we have a go at doing that? It sort of opens your eyes. Yeah. You know, you and I have been in the business 20 years. You'd think we'd sort of have a few bases covered, but no. you know, there's such a wealth of stuff out there that might keep us coming back to this idea. So on that note, 1920s, I've decided on Showboat, and I'll do Old Man River, because I love that song. I remember this probably one of the first times I was really getting to theater, because I just saw Phantom and fell in love with it. So Hal Prince, oh, he's directing Showboat. I'll go see that. Yeah. It's the first time I went to a show on my own, sat there in the audience. One of the best shows I've ever seen. And we had the understudy on, Stacy Robinson was his name. Mike Bell wasn't there. But I remember when Stacy sang Old Man River, the walls of the theater were shaking. I've never heard anything like that in my life. And obviously this song's been done by so many different artists and it's such a great song. And obviously out of context, we can uh, put our own spin on it. But yeah, Old Man River is my choice. Shall we do it? From the rehearsal room, London. Old Man River, that old man river, he must know something. But don't say nothing He just keeps rolling He keeps on rolling along He don't plant taters He don't plant cotton them are soon forgotten but old man river 
So, 1930s, you chose? 1930s, I chose, well, actually, you know, I, I sort of undenied about it, but then I chose Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Beautiful. Which is a song that I remember sitting in um, some music lessons as a kid and someone playing it to me and saying, this is the most perfectly written song of all time. I'm always quoted as one of the most popular songs of, you know, the 20th, 20th century, and I've never sung it before, and it's, um, it's been really lovely to... Nice, think about man. it and rehearse it, so yeah. I actually, a few years ago, I did a, um, a concert performance of The Wizard of Oz with the BBC Concert Orchestra. It was the 80th anniversary of the release of the film. Oh, wow. And so um, I was the Tin Man, um, and uh, do you know what? I'd never seen the film before. Is that terrible to say? I still say? haven't seen it. Have I've you not? Seen it. I've never seen oh, it. Oh, I don't before. feel like such a heel now. No. Uh, but I went and I watched it with my little girl. And actually, who must have been, I suppose, maybe two and a half at the time, something like that, three. She was just getting to the stage where she could really sort of delve into that fan fantasy stuff. And watching that film with her through her eyes was the most incredible experience. And I understand now why that song and that film and that show has become what it has become. Seeing her become sort of entranced by this, um, by this world and by Dorothy's experience. That song originally was in the film and then the original cut, they were not gonna keep it in. And it was Judy Garland's vocal coach who said, are you kidding? You need to keep this song in. And it's gone on to be this, wow. you know, often voted the, the, the most favorite song of the, of the 20th century. So yeah, it was really the sort of attachment to it through my little girl that made me go, my God, it's another one of those songs that you take for granted. But then you get to an age where you think, oh no, I really want to have a go at that. When all the world is a hopeless jumble And the raindrops tumble all around Heaven opens a magic Clouds darken up the skyway. There's a rainbow highway to be found. Leading from your window pane to a place beyond the sun. Just a step beyond. Somewhere 
Well, that brings us to the 1940s. We were umming on uh, uh, about that for a while. Yeah. So we've landed on which show? Oklahoma. Very good. Yeah, thanks very much. <laughs> Was that a test? <laughs> um, one of those shows that I've only ever seen and never done. Have you ever done it? Never done it, never seen it. My only experience with that was the secret sort of uh, track I sent you where I've always loved the idea of Oklahoma be done in a bluegrass style. So mm. um, luckily friends and connected with this uh, band from North Carolina called the Avett Brothers. So one day I went over to their farm, literally on their farm, upstairs in his sort of, in Scott Avett's rehearsal. Uh, Compound. Studio. Dungeon. Yeah. <laughs> Sitting there. We recorded like five songs from Oklahoma. We had uh, Belinda Carlisle, the country singer. Yeah. Yeah. Her oh vocals gosh, aren't yeah. amazing. So then we're recording um, Kansas City, which is what we decided to do today. Yeah. But it was such a surreal experience because this is, these are farm boys. This, we're on the farm. And then Seth, the brother, comes up. Oh, he'll get on drums on that. Then their bass player came up. And it just became this real hootenanny of, I got the Kansas City on a Friday. But me, also, I know they're my friends, but I'm still a big fan of the band. I was like, what is just <laughs> happening right now? Well, how am I on Scott Avis' farm singing show tunes? <laughs> it was so authentic, though. I'm like, this, this is it. But it's interesting. It feels like that, that version of that is sort of taking that song back to where it potentially came from. You, yeah. you, you know, one can't deny the impact that Rogers and Hammerstein had on, you know, moving the, the art form forwards. But I guess probably, I'm surmising here, but I imagine that some of the, the stuff that they did in Oklahoma, they would have picked up on some of those bluegrass kind of folk rhythms and, yeah. and melodies. So that's what we're going to do, in tribute to that. Yeah. Yeah. And isn't it funny now, they've written a musical and it's out there now, the Avery Brothers. Yeah. Oh, what did they write? It doesn't matter, they didn't cast <laughs> us. <laughs> <laughs> By Saturday I'd learned a thing or two Cause up to then I didn't have an idea Of what the modern world was coming to I counted 20 gas buggies going by themselves Almost every time I took a walk And then I put my ear to a bell telephone And a strange woman started in to talk What next? Yeah, what? Everything's up to date in Kansas City They gone about as far as they can go They went and built a skyscraper seven stories high About as high as a building ought to go Everything's like a dream in Kansas City It's better than a magic lantern show You can turn the radiators on whenever you want some heat With every kind of comfort every house is 
That was fun. <laughs> Thanks, Sam. You're promoted to <laughs> Rear Admiral. <laughs> 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 Nineteen fifties. Fifties. We've got. I've grown accustomed to her face, which is from My Fair Lady. Um, actually, I, had, I have done that show, but twenty years ago, and played a different part. And it's Freddie. Freddie. Where did you do that? I did it in Cyprus. Really? At an amphitheatre in Cyprus. Oh wow! And it was amazing. Um, and I remember standing because Freddie is quite a sort of incidental character. I remember standing in the wings every night listening to. Um, Clive Carter, you know Clive Carter? Yeah. He was at Higgins singing this song every night and thinking just what a masterpiece of, of musical theatre writing it is. There is perhaps a certain uncomfortable misogyny about it. However, I suppose you have to think of it in, in terms of being a, a song from the 1950s. Misogyny might be the wrong word, but there is at least a sort of um, uh, a pomposity to the character which can be misconstrued sometimes, or at least construed as, um, as that. However, you know, he's basically saying, you don't know what you've got till it's gone, which I suppose is a recurring theme throughout a lot of art and a lot of song, isn't it? And um, I've always wanted to sing it, and again, never have. So looking forward to doing that. It's um, lyrically, I think, a bit of a masterpiece. Who writes the lyric, I've grown accustomed to her face? We know it now because we know that. Yeah, yeah. But actually, Encountering that as a lyric to begin with, that must have felt like sort of anti-poetry. Whereas actually it sort of transforms into this most beautiful thing of going, my God, I got so used to this person being here that I've only just realized she's gone and I'm in love with her. I mean, it's, for me, that's a, it's a remarkable piece of songwriting and I'm um, looking forward to having a go on it. I've grown accustomed to a
Thank you, guys. Okay, so now the 1960s. Camelot is my choice, mm -hmm. and one of my favorite songs, If Ever I Would Leave You. Beautiful. Yeah. So beautiful. We were spoiled for choice. With yeah, this, with, with this, this decade, decades, we're not going to be we're not going to be you know struggling to find something to do next time we do. Next this. time it's you doing the sixties. Look, we can't wait. I'm gonna be all over it. <laughs> um, that's my natural habitat. I'm singing a song because it just makes my heart bleed, and I just think it's so beautiful. These lyrics and the, sim the simplicity, you know, like, well, if I ever would leave you, it won't be in this season, in this season, this season, you know. Yeah. And um, probably my. Favorite theater song. It's when, it right. when it comes to like a, a romantic, romantic ballad. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? I bet you wouldn't have said that age twenty five. No, because we're probably looking. How high how can high we can sing? sing? How high and loud can we sing? Now, now, what how high is it? To? I'm singing that. What, but what draws you into a song now, though? The story. Yeah. Do I want to tell that story? Yeah. And that one does. Yeah. Yeah. It's full of tension and release, that, that song to me and, and that show. What makes you want to sing a song? I think the same thing. I, I think it has to be about what's at stake, what's being tested. It's about what the character is going through set against what the sort of tension, what the test of the show is. Um, yeah, and that, that sort of A and B journey, like if, if we're finishing where we started, well, what did we just do? But if the story has moved on, a character's yeah. moved on, a decision's made, something's you know, you're no longer the same person or in the same place. Well, that, that's going to be a fun journey, right? If ever I would leave you, it wouldn't be in summer. Seeing you in summer, I never... If I'd ever leave you, how could it be in autumn? How I'd leave in autumn, I never will know. I've seen how you sparkle when fall nips the air. I know you in autumn, and I must be there. Could I leave you running merrily through the snow on a wintry evening when you catch the fire's glow? If ever I would leave you, how could it be in springtime, knowing how in spring I Come to the 1970s, for many people, the best decade of the um, 
20th century. The decade of rock musicals. So it really turned on its head then, didn't it? Yeah. Let's face it. I mean, maybe towards the end of the 60s as well, but the 70s really ushered in a new... New wave, do you think that would be fair to say? What was the first rock musical? What came first? I guess Hair would be yeah, maybe say, there, yeah. or Godspell or something like that, wouldn't it? But all those sort of... Um, Jesus Christ Superstar, Evita, you know. Hair, that was 60s, wasn't it? That was it? just, I think, just right. made it in at the end of the Summer of Love. But man, you know, there was drugs and there was free love, and then people decided to put it on stage. Why wouldn't you? And nudity, fantastic. We're not doing that, we're not getting nude. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, we're going to do Could We Start Again, Please, from Jesus Christ Superstar, which is a show you've done many times, a show I did back in the day at university. I've seen your Judas. I can't believe it's now hit YouTube <laughs> when I was 18. <laughs> do you know, it's funny, isn't it? This was my least favourite song in the show when I was 18 or 20 or whenever it was I did it. Go on. And now it's one of my favourites. Is it? Mm hmm because of what we're doing? Yeah, I think also because you think, oh, it's not showy-offy, it's not, it's not asking for your appreciation, it's just sort of, it's existing for its purpose within the frame of the story and within the frame of the show, as opposed to shouting, look at me, which I think an awful lot of Jesus Christ Superstar does. Still my favorite show, don't get me wrong. Yeah, but. oh, playing Judas was great, but I'm looking forward to doing this, because I have done this as a du duet before, but... Not with you. Not with you. Oh. Leave the shirt. You just, you gotta Always. leave it in.
It's got to be one. First time it's well. a little golden nugget for the DVD. <laughs> They'll love it. There's no DVD. <laughs> um, license fees. Uh. 1980s. Sam, I don't even think you're born yet. So <laughs> up until now, no okay. song. Like we're already in, we're born at this point. You said Because we're both. 80s. We're both in our 40s. 80s. That's all that matters. <laughs> we're both in our 40s. <laughs> we're doing uh, Finishing the Hat from Sunday in the Park with George, which... Uh, One of the best songs ever written. Oh, I'm glad you said that, Sam, because now I don't have to say that. Yeah. I'm going to ask you why you think it's so good. I think it's just so brilliantly simple and complex at the same time. There's not a great deal that happens no. musically, and yet it tells such a huge story. Yeah. And it's, it's incredible, isn't it? Yeah. And as I understand it, I don't know whether this is a popular story or not, but wasn't in the show when they started to um, preview it. Yeah, I feel like I've heard that, yeah. And Manny Patinkin said, I'm missing a song as this yeah. character. You need to write me a song. And it's, a, it's interpretable, I think, that song as being a sort of universal song about the process of art and artists. You know, he's attributing blame for the breakdown of his relationship to his pursuit of art. And there's such tension, what, coming back to that, that thing about tension and what's being tested in the show, that show tests that idea of your emotional and personal connections always being hamstrung by the pursuit of art and sort of vice versa, your art disenabling you from connecting with people. I think it's a beautiful exploration of what most people go through at some point in their life, even with, whether they're artists or creative people or not, but that sort of tension between what they do for work and what they do for love. How are you getting on with that balance of art and personal life? <laughs> well, that's the other thing, isn't it? Because there's no finite answer to it. I remember a manager sat me down once earlier in my career, and he said, do you want a great diverse career or do you want a great relationship? Can I both? <laughs> I'm not saying you can't be happy in a relationship and be a successful artist, but I think so something's going to have to have that big compromise yeah. and an understanding. But it's also about how you go about it. If you have the desire to connect with both your art and the people in your life, yeah. then that's pretty much all you can do. And both take work. Exactly. I think what they do in what sometimes looks at in the show there is the person who's not willing to try to connect. Madam was out. You and me, pal. Second bottle. Ah, she looks for me. Bonnet flapping, yapping. Ruff! Pastry, chicken. Yes, she looks for me. Good. Let her look for me to tell me why she left me as I always knew she would. I had thought she understood. They have never understood and no reason that they should. But if anybody could. Finishing the hat. How you have to finish the hat. Of the world from a window while you finish the hat, mapping out a sky. What you feel like planning a sky, what you feel when voices that come from a window go until they distance and die, until there's nothing but sky.
a little trace in the way like a window But to see, it's the only way to see So, 1990s. Yes, sir. You just can't get away from them. The decade of the mega musical, I suppose. To a certain extent, the 80s was as well, but the 90s, definitely, it was the, the, the decade when musicals kind of made their stamp on the world, and, and a lot of them are still around today. Yeah. Sunset Boulevard. Yeah. I got the pleasure of doing that this year. Yes. At the Royal Albert Hall. That was a great experience. I think this is a great character, and this song, you can talk to me musically about it, because every time I think of doing this in a show or at a concert, the pianist is like, mm-hmm. It's one of those songs which you get really frustrated at because you just doubt your ability as a musician because you look at the page and you're like, this is not hard. Why am I finding it so difficult? And um, why is that, Sam? Because it's in five <laughs> as opposed to six. Um, and I think it's, it's a tricky one as well because often, and I'm not, not you because you will sing it perfectly, but often singers also struggle with it being in five. And so then when you're trying, you have to kind of make a decision as to like, be like, we're doing this in five, if it kills me, and kind of drag the singer with you, um, or just kind of resign yourself to the fact that it's going to be a mixture of five and six. Um, <laughs> well, maybe this is interesting, because this is why I probably feel at home with a song like this, because I can't count. <laughs> so I've never found the difficulty with this one. <laughs> I'm not inhibited by time signature. But presumably, and I don't know the show all that well, actually, is there, and this is a question for a pair of you, really, is there a reason why that song is in five is it because it's a sort of destabilizing and that says something about the character in that moment i think with what joe's going through at this time and i think as artists especially nowadays too with social media and how much of our souls especially myself i've branched out with different platforms on social media and you just think i keep trying to remind myself is this enriching or is you selling your soul or you know because he he's an, an artist he had ambition and what he has sold out to, I like the idea of like, because he does speak to the audience on this one, but it's, I know what you're thinking. Okay. You've done the same. Yeah. So I think yeah. with the time signature underneath that you were referring to, I think, yeah, it does give the chaos that's going underneath him. And that's something Weber ha does yeah. with like Superstar. Superstar. There's a lot yeah. of that. Seven, seven, eight, things like that. Yeah. Well, it worked. Because here we are. Yeah. Still playing, yeah. sp still paying homage to Lord Andrew Lloyd Webber. Sure, I came out here to make my name. One in my pool, my dose of fame. One in my parking space, the Warners. But after a year of one-room hell, a Murphy bed, a rancid smell, wallpaper peeling at the corner. Sunset Boulevard, Twisting Boulevard, secretive and rich, a little scary. Sunset Boulevard, Tempting Boulevard, waiting there to swallow the unwary. Dreams are not enough to win a war, out here they're always keeping score beneath the tan the battle rages. Smile, a rented smile, fill someone's glass, kiss someone's wife, kiss someone's ass, you do whatever pays the wages. Sunset Boulevard, Headline Boulevard, getting here is only the beginning. Sunset Boulevard, Jackpot Boulevard, once you've won you have to keep on winning. You think I sold out, dead right I sold out, I've just been waiting for the right offer, comfortable. 
full quarters, regular rations, 24 hour, five star room service. And if I'm honest, I like the lady, I can't help being touched by her folly. I'm treading water, taking her money, watching her sunset. Well, I'm a writer. L.A.'s changed a lot over the years since those brave gold rush pioneers came in their creaky covered wagons. Far as they could go, end of the line. Their dreams were yours, their dreams were mine. But in those dreams were hidden dragons. Sunset Boulevard, Frenzy Boulevard, swamped with every kind of false emotion. Sunset Boulevard, brutal boulevard, just like you will wind up in the ocean. I threw a rope, now I have suits and she has hope It seemed an elegant solution One day this must end, it isn't real Still, I'll enjoy a hearty meal Before tomorrow's execution Sunset Boulevard, lethal boulevard Destination for the Sony hearted Sunset Boulevard, ruthless boulevard Everyone's forgotten how they started So, which brings us on to the noughties. Sam, is that the decade in which yeah. you were born? Yeah, I'm around in the noughties. God yeah. damn it. Were you? <laughs> yeah. Just. Yeah, just. Should have got a backing track. <laughs> 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 so, Catch Me If You Can, the musical. Which I love. See, I don't know the musical all that well. Is I, it? I don't know the musical, I just love the score. How yeah. did you, because you chose this song. I've I realised now I've sung it once before and it's always stuck with me as oh that's a nice duet male male duet. Isn't that happening more often? There's times where I feel like I've never sung a song before and then someone like shows you on YouTube. I'm like, oh, I did sing it. First yeah. of all, I don't remember singing it. I don't even remember this moment. No, that's that's what happens with age, isn't it? Yeah, slow deterioration of your memory. Not him. Yeah, we're both sure. double his age. Stop it. <laughs> So, what is it that you love about the school? Because it, for me, it, it feels um, really of the the time where the, the the show is set, but also really contemporary as well. You know, it's got that kind of swing feel to it, which is really delightful. But there's also it feels very much of you know the 21st century. Is yeah. that fair to say? Yeah, I think it's it's unashamedly jazzy. Yeah, I, I feel like it's um, it just it just accepts the style. It's like a wonderful, it's a wonderful pastiche without being tacky. I yeah. just think it's brilliantly original. Agreed. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, it's a fantastic film to begin with. Yeah. And I don't think the show has ever, has the show ever made it over to the UK? No, no but I was did. this earlier actually. Yeah. It didn't, didn't do all that well in America. No. And then did I see it it's gonna come here at some point? Somebody should. Maybe they should off the back of this. You yeah. could play the dad. I can play the son. <laughs> I can play the son. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's do it. Remember that story I learned at your feet? Well, now it's my turn. Take a seat. Two little mice of great renown fell in some milk and one proceeded to drown. The other one still the toast of the town cause he made butter he looked around, deduced his plight, said this is no way to spend a Saturday night. But he had the style to make things right, cause he made butter out of cream. He kicked his legs up, he tossed and turned, so not to end up a ghost. He did the hokey pokey till the milk got churned, and baby, he walked out and butter. She's down at Land Lakes. She's living proof that pop, all it takes is a scheme. So if you land in the gutter, just make butter out of cream. It's your turn, Dad. Don't mind why you call me Dad. It's all fixed, doesn't it? We're not doing the script. No, I'm not. You just want to call me Daddy. <laughs> a cockroach in Brazil got drunk at his local coffee mill his time was almost up until 
until he made coffee out of beans. When he came to, he heard such a sound, and much to his shock, when he looked around, he had been scooped and was about to be ground, so he made coffee out of beans. He marched to the south and he stopped to the north. He had to race against fate. Brings us right to the end. Another choice of yours, Big Fish. Big Fish, another musical adaptation, which I suppose also says something about the fact that, um, you know, for the first 70 or 80 years of our show, we're doing original material, and now we're looking uh, at things that were adapted, which I suppose maybe says something. And it's, for me, very interesting because it's not only a story, but it's also a story about stories, which means that it, you're never entirely sure whether your footing is stable or not. It's about truth and about faith and about love, which um, I suppose is a sort of universal theme, really. But um, it came over here not so long ago, the show, and I did the workshop for it, but I never got to sing this song. Ironically enough, in the workshop, we had a guy called Dennis Lawson. Do you know the actor Dennis Lawson? Who's yeah. Ewan McGregor's uncle, who'd done the, All right. one of the parts in the film. Anyway, um, clang. <laughs> Um, so I was listening to Dennis singing this song thinking, my God, this is a beautiful song. It's also a fantastic song to end a show with because it's called How It Ends. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also one of those ones that we were talking about at the beginning in terms of finding male-male duets. And yeah. this is one that when we even first sung it for the first time, I thought, that really, that really suits us. It fits this and it fits it really well to make it into a duet. I agree. And it doesn't have a conclusion, I don't feel, at the end. It mm -hmm. kind of leaves... The an open-ended question. Yeah, that's right. Which I and think suits about, this. And it's about aging, it's about the process of maturity as well, which, how's that going? The maturity part, not so good. <laughs> <laughs> the aging is going really well. <laughs> I seem to have that down pat. Um, but people may not know it, so I hope they enjoy listening to it, really, because I think it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful show, but a beautiful standalone song. I've seen this all before. When I was just a child I met a witch who took a bow And showed me how it ended We stood here on the shore The air was sweet and mild With disbelief and plausibly suspended In my child's imagination It ends with you, it ends with me, it ends the way a story's ending is supposed to be, oh, 
and sing. 